What is good everybody? Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today we're going to have part number two of the worst Mattel figure parts choices. You know, in part number one guys, we talked about it. You guys responded really well to it. You talked about some stuff that you guys wanted to talk about in the video that I totally forgot that Mattel has done before and I definitely wanted to come back with a part two and discuss those things even further. I threw in some of my own as well and we're going to talk about them all here today. Not all of these are as big of a deal to me as the ones in part number one. Part number one, I was trying to cover the ones that I was most concerned with but some of those that you brought to my attention, guys, you definitely made some great points. And I was like, you know what, Brad, you are totally right. I completely forgot about that. So here today, we're going to cover in part number two, guys. So starting part number two off right, guys, let's start off with the kick pad problem. And you guys know what I'm talking about. The NXT, or not NXT, but the Target Exclusive Hall of Champions, Johnny Organo Elite, and the NXT Target Exclusive Seth Rollins Elite both play victim to this right here. Kevin Owens also plays victim, but it's sort of a, it's sort of a different thing that we'll get to later on with that figure. But this NXT Seth Rollins and this Johnny Gargano, guys, why did they give us this kick pad mold? I do not understand why they did this. When we have had many, I'm talking many people before this, guys, we had CM Punk, we had Finn Balor, we had, we've had Daniel Bryan, we've had just many, many guys with kick pads, lower legs and kick pads before. I don't know why they chose to give us these short kick pads when they clearly have the parts. I, I just don't understand. It's not like it was the first Elite that we have gotten. It literally doesn't make any sense. Another problem with, you know, this Seth Rollins figure is that they gave him jacked legs and they also gave him really jacked arms. Like, they clearly had the X-Pac arms would have been fine, you know, with the the <laughs> thicker wrist tape. I just don't see why they couldn't take regular Elite Seth Rollins arms or just a regular Elite Seth Rollins body mold, paint the legs in the skin color, and then the lower legs could have been black or whatever color, and then the arms would have been completely fine. Just change the wristband decals, and it would have been perfect, but they decided not to do that. I don't really understand. I, that's These are the questions that I'd like to have answered, is that what goes on in these meeting rooms when they're making these figures? Like, why did we get this kick pad mold? Why did we get these short kick pads when it literally makes no sense to me? But, um... You know, they hopefully in the next Johnny Gargano, they will fix this problem. And uh, if they do any more, you know, we've never seen another Seth Rollins from NXT like this from FCW. So I don't know really, you know, what we're going to see in the future, but hopefully they fix it if we do go forward, but this Seth Rollins is absolutely massive. I had to change all kinds of parts on this guy with mine, and then with Johnny Gargano, I, I just don't see why they couldn't give us Daniel Bryan lower legs. So I definitely had to throw these two guys in here when we're talking about the next worst parts that Mattel has used. Now, up next, guys, our next thing we're going to cover is going to be the Edge and Jericho Torso. I had this commented on my thing. I don't remember who said it, but I do agree with this to a T. I'm not totally upset with the torso that they do use. You know, it's not completely completely awful because, you know, their bodies don't really resemble this. I think that a Bo Dallas torso could also work, but the torso that we really would like to see is that same Tully Blanchard, you know, the Terry Funk body mold, the William Regal body mold really does these guys justice. You're going to see some figures here, these fix-up edges that I found on Google, guys. Look how beautiful they look when they have this torso on there. I do have a fix-up on one of my edges in my collection, and it just looks so phenomenal. I love the way that this torso looks on the edge figure. I've also seen Jericho's, Daniel Bryan's, and other guys done with this torso mold, and it literally, it guys, it makes the figure look so much more realistic, so much better. That red Elite 8 edge fix up on the right is absolutely perfect. I love that figure. The basic arms they threw on there with the head scan and the torso, I mean, that edge figure right there, it just makes you want to jump with glee. Guys. I think that edge on the right there is is just a pretty much a perfect figure from head to toe, and even the Elite 1 fix up on the left looks phenomenal, so hats off to whatever collector that is, because they made the figure 100 times better, so I definitely wanted to include Edge and Jericho in here and show you how much better those figures could look with the appropriate torso. Up next, this one doesn't bother me as much as the other ones that we've covered so far, guys, but Brock Lesnar Elite Cavs, somebody commented this on my last video talking about the parts choices, and Lesnar's calves are definitely pretty ripped up, guys. They are they are most definitely ripped up, and I can see where somebody would have a problem with this. I mean, they are definitely very, very cut, but it doesn't bother me enough to be like, you know what, that's, that's not something I want. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't bother me that much just because it's so... You can't really see his legs anyway like I mean it's not something that I'm looking at I think I look more at the torso and the arms rather than the lower legs I know you say that it's like well Brad you just picked on Johnny Gargano and Seth Rollins lower legs but it's like yeah but that that completely changed the whole mold of a kick pad when we've seen the right kick pads in the past so maybe I don't know who you'd switch it with I think there's a figure that you're supposed to switch these with to get them more accurate maybe Stone Cold or something I can't remember the exact ones you're supposed to switch with it I think it is Stone Cold Steve Austin makes these figures look more accurate for Brock Lesnar but 
the calves don't bother me as much but i did want to include this see if you guys are feeling the same way let me know down in the comment section below guys do these calves bother you or are you just whatever i mean it doesn't really matter to me i'm, I'm not a huge you know brock lesnar advocate um i like brock lesnar but i i still i don't really care that much about the calves here another thing i wanted to mention guys is the jeff hardy tank top mold i had a lot of comments talking about this and i did want to cover this a second because you know this used to bother me a lot i used to be like you know why do they give us this tank top torso you see where it's the tank top torso they just paint over it and make it look like like sleeves I used to not really like this and then I realized what they this could mean is you know in a in a match Jeff Hardy typically is shirtless and then over that he has you know a tank top and then over that he wears his long sleeve shirt so this could be accurate as in his tank top is underneath his long sleeve so you take the long sleeve off you have the tank top and then you take the tank top off then he's shirtless so that is just something I've thought about before it totally does kind of look stupid sometimes but I can look past it and I know how to get around it maybe one day I can do a video on it I know exactly how to fix it and make it look a lot better but um I I think that this is definitely something I wanted to include in the video because somebody did mention it and it used to bother me so I did want to come on here and you know plead the case of why it could work maybe if uh, if it was bothering you just sort of some reasoning behind it. it's kind of like when they put the bra mold underneath the t-shirts of the women like the painted on uh, t-shirts they still have the bra mold it could just be the bra up under the t-shirt it's just something to think about but I do see where you're saying where it could look dumb they could use like a shield torso you know like a Dean Ambrose shield torso I've seen a lot of people use that and it does look a lot better maybe do that and then paint up the the shoulders i mean a pattern like this the elite series 67 would be tough but you know those those plain colors would be easy and, and stuff like that but yeah i mean this used to bother me but it doesn't bother me as much as it used to um you know a few months back or so and then another thing i wanted to cover guys is the kevin owens getting into kevin owens guys you know we mentioned the arm mold or the no we mentioned the kick pad mold earlier at the beginning of the video well here with kevin owens it used to bother me a lot on this one too is they give him the short kick pad mold and i can see where it kind of makes more sense for kevin owens i still don't like it but I can see where it would work and um, I don't know why they don't just give us like John Cena lower knees and then give us kick pad feet I guess they felt that wouldn't be the best I've gotten over it sort of you know I, it kind of bothers me from time to time but you know as time has passed it's kind of you know I've kind of gotten over it and the short kick pads don't bother me as much on the Kevin Owens because you know it, it makes for the better it makes the figure actually better when you're posing it around and stuff when I don't have it when I when I switch the lower knees with John Cena elite and then I put kick pads on it the legs get really warped and they get really loose and I don't know I could just have messed it up that first time it was a long time ago when I did it maybe I'll redo it one day and it'll be a lot better the joints will be a lot better I'll be able to pose it better but um I, I found that you know doing it this way at the Royal Rumble and you know MDT live with Kevin Owens being the extreme champion posing his figure around is a lot better with these short kick pads and I know that sounds crazy but it, it doesn't look the best but it does pose and make, make for better posing so that is just something I wanted to include here another guy said that you know the longer arms the jacked arms that we used to get I, I don't think we can default or we can can't fault Mattel anymore because they fixed the problem and I don't like to you know go back and be like well why don't they do this when they've already fixed the problem that's really not anything to really you know get on when they've already done something to correct it the Elite Series 66 it still has the kick pad problem but the arms are perfect I think the arms are better I know that they use like the RVD biceps. I would prefer the Luke Harper biceps, you know, the fatter looking biceps for Kevin Owens. But I think that this, the smaller arms here, the RVD style bicep looks a lot better than, you know, a, a jacked, just massive Roman Reigns style arm that they that they used to give him on his elite. So I can live with it now with the, with the RVD bicep, but it, it's definitely a whole lot better than that jack bicep. But maybe one day we'll get the Luke Harper, but for now we'll have to stick with the RVD biceps. Next up, guys, I had to include these more NXT Target exclusive figures, guys, but this time we were talking about the Revival. Yes, the Revival, guys, you will see here on the left, we have the NXT figures with their NXT Tag Team Championships, and these guys, I feel like... These guys are way too small, guys. The torsos are too small. Their legs are so small. These guys are tiny. I think that a Tully Blanchard and Arn Anderson, anything, a Terry Funk body would have been so much better for these guys. They're just way too small. I don't understand why they give guys like this the Daniel Bryan style torso. I am just so sick of this torso. It doesn't work well for them. And I wish, I honestly just wish they'd do away with this torso altogether. I think that, you know, uh, the Bo Dallas fits better or the Road Dog fits better or the, you know, the Terry Funk fits better because I cannot stand that smaller torso like that and these figures are tiny when I say tiny when I used to use them uh, versus the young bucks or just posing these guys around they're so much more smaller than any other tag teams that we have gotten so it is very frustrating when you're trying to pose guys around and they're way too small and they don't represent the revival very well I wanted to throw these in here because the customs on the right these fix-ups I did these same fix-ups before and they make the figures much more fun to play around with they're much better 
to, to see up next to other figures. They just look way more in scale, and they're a lot more fun to pose around and, and do all that other stuff, pick fitting, whatever it is. They're a lot better when they're, you know, more accurate. They look a lot better, so I definitely had to include the Revival here. And the last figure that we're going to talk about, guys, are the Elite Dolph Ziggler arms. Had to include it here because they always, 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 they used to not. The Elite 5, the Elite 13, neither of those had the jacked arms that the Elite 24, the Elite 48, the, uh, there's another Elite, the Elite 39, all three of those Elites have these jacked arms and I do not get it because they're basics. Every basic Ziggler we've ever gotten has had those small arms and they look so much better. You fix up the elites and they just look so good. I love the torso. I love the legs they choose. It's just those godforsaken jacked arms. I just don't understand it. But I had to include them here, guys. They, they've done it with Cody Rhodes as well. It's like they give them this torso and this body mold. It's like they literally took the Elite 20 Cody Rhodes and the Elite 32 Cody Rhodes and they just changed the boots up. This is basically the same figure. They just changed the skin tone, changed the head scan, changed the boots, and why Voila, there you go. They pump it out, and that's exactly what they did here with this Dolph Ziggler. But um, I, every time I get a Ziggler, I have to switch the arms. There are a few on the shelf that are not... They don't have the arm switch, and it drives me nuts, guys. I cannot stand these jacked arms. They just look way too unrealistic. So I, I definitely have to do the, uh, the, you know, the fix up every single chance I get. And Dolph Ziggler basics are very cheap. They've made so many, you can get them for like six, seven, eight bucks on eBay. So I don't plan, uh, I don't mind, you know, buying some, getting the arms, getting the head scan, getting an extra crowd member, whatever the case. I'll do it any day just to fix up these arms. But that pretty much does it for all the other figures that I have to talk about here today, guys. There are some other figures that I am thinking about making a part three. Probably not here this week, but probably another week or so. Uh, we'll get on here and do a part three to this video because there are still some other things that I'd like to talk about. You know, um, one of them has to do with Sting. The other has to do with a couple other guys. And we'll get on here and we'll discuss them. But that pretty much does it for today's video and everything we're going to talk about for uh, today's portion of the you know the worst parts choices that we've gotten from Mattel but thank you guys for watching I hope you guys did enjoy part number two of the worst Mattel parts choices guys I hope you guys enjoyed the video subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE figure videos follow me on Instagram and Twitter at my damn toys and I will see you guys in the next video thank you